Hello everybody and welcome back to The Average. On Friday we went and took a visit to our local tiger. This place was so amazing but I went there for a specific reason and it was to find these alcohol markers that I had a couple of at home and I wanted more of because I thought they were really good and I wanted to share and test them with you guys. Let's just talk about tiger for a moment can we? If you don't have one in your area I'm really sorry I just think it's such a cool shop and they have so many cheap art supplies and most of the stuff is really good quality. It's really nice to know that there is an alternative out there for people who can't really afford all the expensive stuff and you don't necessarily need expensive stuff. I mean, obviously it makes making artwork nicer and the results are probably in some cases nicer, but you can work with what you've got. And I just really love Tiger. They have so many different things as well and I was obsessed. It was quite a small shop because I, I've been in bigger Tigers before, but the one near us, I didn't no was near us so I was like wait there's a tiger down the road let's go so we went and it was amazing obviously this video is not sponsored or anything at all I used my own money for this and I just wanted to show you guys the alcohol markers because I think they're really good and if you have a tiger near you then definitely go check them out you'll see now when I show you the haul and what I got and I will test out the pens now Gigi doesn't like it. Aww. Gigi, come on. Come on. Oh, he's a picky boy. He's not fancy enough for him. These two are going to town. There's enough for everyone. I'm sorry, Gigi, that I did not let you treat, so I bought especially for you the prince. The game's sulking. Gigi, come on. Why do these treat you a bit better than me? Not good enough. <laughs> Not impressed. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine, but you just can't get into it. Hello everybody, so I had to clean my desk to put my brand new uh, tiger items down on the table. So I thought I would just go through what I got and do a sort of mini haul. And I bought a few more things than I thought. So we'll start off with the pens, seeing as that's the reason I went to Tiger in the first place. I went to find these pens because they are a alcohol marker type pen. So there's four packs, um, they were three euros each and they were a euro, so they're like a euro for one. And Chris bought these a while ago, like a set of them a while ago and I thought those are gonna be really rubbish. They don't look great, but they are really nice and I've been using them a lot recently because obviously on my comic I used Copic markers and Pro markers and stuff and a lot of them ran out. So as they were running out, I was like, mm, I'll try, you know, I'll try out this color or whatever. And I was just really blown away. I thought it was really good for what it is as well. So if you're looking for a cheap alternative to alcohol markers, um, these bad boys, they're really good. So if you have a tiger in you, I know a lot of people don't. Um, next, we'll test those out later, by the way. Um, next, I just bought this mixing paint palette because I don't have one. Because I'm a professional, as we all know. I think this is like a euro or a couple of euros, so it's worth it. It's just plastic, which, is not as nice as China or something, but you know, it's cheap, so. And I also, I got this, this isn't from Tiger, but this is for my acrylics, talking about palettes. I got this from a shop called Casa, and it's just like this little plate, and I thought it'd be really good for my acrylics. Yeah, I really like the design, so it's got little like divots in it, so I was thinking it could hold the paint quite well. Anyway, that's, those are the two new palettes that I have. <laughs> I also got this watercolour block from Tiger because it was cheap. I think it was about three euros and it's got 20 sheets and it doesn't say anything about how much water it can hold. But yeah, I'm assuming it can hold a bit considering it's calling itself watercolour paper. I don't know where to put this. I'm not good at this, this displaying stuff. They had a whole bin of washi tapes. And then they had a whole bin of washi tapes and they were three for two euros. And I felt like I bought six, but I think I only got five, which is an absolute stupid idiot move. <laughs> I got these llama designs, which is so cute. Or oh, alpaca, I'm not sure if they're alpaca or llama. And some toucans and a blue llama and some little spots. But also I forgot to mention Alfred. I've decided to call him Alfred. 
and he is a, a little blue alpaca I guess or a llama I'm not sure what the difference is maybe I should look that up but he's just gonna sit here because he's a cute boy and Kubo took a bit of a shine to him and then wasn't it wasn't a shine it was he had evil intentions so he had to be taken away from Kubo and this is one of my favorite things that I found Ugh. it is a rubber with a little handy case and then it's got this little brushy that you can brush away your little you know, what are those called? The rubber bits that come off. I shouldn't say rubber, should I? Because that's rude in your language of America. It's an eraser. A rubber eraser, whatever. Um, yeah, it gets rid of the, the trash that's left behind. Well, last but not least, I got this beautiful pencil case with some, I'm going to assume they're alpacas on them. And I love it, so I'm gonna put all, if they fit, all these markers in there. So I have a little marker pencil case and it's on theme with all the llama slash alpaca things. So that's my haul. I bought a load of other stuff, but they're kind of more for um, like around the house. So I've got these like napkins and stuff like that, you know, boring stuff. I will show you this though, cause I think it's cute. It's a little eye mask that you put in the fridge and it's like seashells and you can't really see it very well but it's got glitter and it's pink and it's absolutely girly which is not really me but I love it I'm sort of I'm girly a bit but not not um, shut up okay yeah there we go that's my haul and I hope you guys like that I'm gonna test out these pens now okay I think I'll do a different video on the watercolor paper and palette mm, maybe that's not that interesting but you'll see me using it I guess let's go Hold up guys, I found the extra washi tape. Yeah, great day for the washi tape. I'm ready to do some doodles and swatches. Okay, this is my sketchbook. I forgot the name for sketchbook then. Really good. Uh. No, I hate when it does that. It makes me cringe. <laughs> here she comes. We're trying to film pesto. Get out of here. Get out of here. Lie here if you want. You can lie here, but shush. Okay, first off, we have the blues and slightly greens. Yes, brilliant. Brilliant, you're here, we know. Everyone wants, knows that you're here, okay? And this colour, they all have um, numbers on them, so I'm assuming that there must be enough for these numbers. So there's 12 here, and on these blue ones it says 99. Does that mean that they have 99 colours? It can't really, but... It doesn't make sense to me, I guess. The good thing about test printing for your comic, you have a lot of scrap paper. Pesto, you need to calm down, okay? Okay. Oi, oi! She just fell off the table. She sat down and she just fell off. Oh, Pesto. She's shamed. You got a bit of picture up, didn't you? She fell off the table. I've brought her back. Lie down. Let's do pesto cam quick. Pesto, lie down. Yeah, she just fell off there. That was pretty old. Let's get back to the swatching at hand. See, it's just nice. And they also, they do blend quite well because that's the whole point of our cold markers is that you don't have, you know, when you use a felt tip pen, you have all those lines and you can see where you've drawn on the paper. These ones blend quite well like Copics do. So that's the whole point of them. A euro, guys, a euro. So I think like you've got to really consider that when you take into account the how they are. Look at that, that's so nice. Super pigmented, that one is 12. This one is a four. Like obviously the packaging is not as nice. Um, it does look cheap, the plastic key is cheap. They don't give you any like indication of what the numbers are. They just see a number. I think maybe they just put that there randomly. And yeah, here's the light blue. I think I have this one already and I really like it. It's kind of like a turquoisey. So it looks a little bit green. I really like this color. Let's continue with our green obsession here and open these green ones. Cause these look quite green, but I think it might be the paper is a little bit cream. So it's probably making it look more green than they are. So if I used it on white paper, it probably looked bluer. Does that make sense to everybody? Is that an acceptable thing? Let's put these here. And yeah, again, same packaging. Uh, this one's number one. You are number one, number five and number seven. I guess the colours aren't really, again, another problem with the packaging is that the colours don't really look like what is indicated. It's just a vague indication of what the colour is. 
So this is like quite a bright, luminous green, whereas that looks quite olive green to me. You get that with um, Copics and Promarkers anyway. It's never gonna be an exact match. Oh, this one is a very dark green. That one is nice. I, I'm doing the swatches bigger here for some reason. Good job, Star. Let's do the browns before I do these colors. Um, I put on my Instagram that I was using these tiger markers and somebody asked me if, they, if I had found a skin color. And I was like, no, not really, but I'm gonna look later for colors. These three could be considered skin markers. If they are these colors that they suggest, we'll, we'll see with the swatching. If they come out a bit of an obscure color, then maybe not. But they could, yeah, you know, they are skin colors, skin tones. And let's try them out. Yeah, that's a, that's a nice skin tone. That one is good. See, that is a lot darker though than indicated. So these two must be quite dark. So for that could be a skin tone, done and this one and i quite like that color that's a very nice dark brown a euro each not bad i mean they work pretty well so can't really complain unless you need a specific color then i would go with these guys so if you have copics or pro markers you can probably look up what the colors are that you need and write them down and stuff i definitely have one of these in this pack already so this is a light pink See, this is quite like an orangey pink, I would say, um, compared to the sort of lilac-y pink that it shows, but yeah, that's nice. I would say that that one is the closest match to what it looks like, the colour. That's very nice, very nice. And now we have the dark purple. Also very nice. This is a nice colour. I'm a sucker for purples and pinks, though, to be honest. I honestly think my favourite colours are these, these kind of range. They layer quite well. Too, which I think looks really cool and you can have some really nice effects with them. Let's get drawing something shall we? Because I think that is the true test of how well these markers work. Pesto cam! She's sleeping on the edge even though she just fell off that, you know, living her life on the edge. Okay, so I have my reference photo here. What I've done is just gone on Pinterest and I've looked up Helsinki street fashion because those photos always look quite cool, quite distinct style that people have. And I found this photo and I really like it. So I'm gonna try recreate it. Just a reference and I'll try and store it in my style a little bit. I've got my basic B pencil here. I'm gonna start. It's probably quite strange to see me sketching because I don't know if I ever show like my sketchy style um style sketchy kind of work that I do but it's very it's strange to show you so I'm trying to concentrate and I think that is probably gonna mess me up when I'm talking to you guys but hey I'll try I'll try to keep talking the thing with hands is that it can be really difficult but I think whenever you have a reference it just makes you feel more conf confident and I realize that the image won't look exactly as the reference will but that's a good thing because I feel that you should just take inspiration from the reference and make it your own and that's what makes it interesting because otherwise you're just recreating the photo a little bit and that can be cool but that's not really what I'm going for in this image so I'm going to change her earrings up I love this skirt it's very pretty but I don't think I have a yellow so we're going to have to choose a different colour and I think it's going to be maybe that luminous green because that's very similar the tip with sketching is to just look at the basic shapes of what the reference image is and just trying to copy that line and the negative space. I always like to see the back of the dress, the skirt, I just like that in images. So she's got these like sandals which are quite hard to draw. <laughs> remember to breathe when drawing folks as well. I remember hearing that tip from Bobby Chu like years ago and I was very much like well duh and then I realized that I do hold my breath when I'm trying to draw something and I'm feeling the pressure if you breathe steadily you realize that it makes you calm down and relax and just enjoy what you're doing her legs look stunted oh no well it's time for handy rubber time I mean eraser what no I'm English I mean rubber sorry and now it's time to test the little brush Actually, that's really handy. It's not quite getting all the things though. Get off. That's nice. I like that. Get off of there. Okay. Ooh. 
So there we go, and now it's time to draw again over all these dents that I made. Good job, me. So I'm just gonna block out the shapes this time. Sometimes when you start to draw something and it goes wrong, and then you try to draw it again and again and again, and it just never goes right, that's that happens to me. So sometimes it's good to take break, guys. Just take a break from the thing that you're struggling to draw and come back. I'm not gonna do that now. <laughs> I'm not gonna take my own advice. Also looking at darks and shadows can help. So if you like squint at an image and you can really see the values, that can really help to give you a guide of where to draw. Looking at negative shapes here, I think this is fine. And then there's like this much room between there. But from here to here, there's like a lot more room within the, looking at the reference image. So what I'm gonna do is rub it out and put it further over here. I'll rub out the lines softly. Also when you block out colour you get a sense of the proportion and shapes that you've drawn and if they're wrong or right, so we'll see if I like what I've done. I'll probably look back at this footage and be like, what have you done here? Okay, I've roughly rubbed that out, so it's just going to be coming through a little bit. So we're going to use the darkest on her hair, because her hair is the darkest in the image. And I think the bleed is quite strong with these guys, with these pens, so we have to be quite careful. So they're faring pretty well, they're pretty nice. They don't bleed that much, to be honest. It's because I'm getting quite close to the line and they're not going over my pencil lines. So that's, that's very nice of you, pen. Thank you. Thank you for not ruining my drawing. And I don't know whether to use the lighter brown or the mid brown. I don't know which one is best matching. I think she's got quite a nice orange hue to her skin tone, so I think I'm gonna use the first one. I'm gonna rub that out, that hair strand, because I don't like it anymore. Get out of here. Oh, I went over the mouth. Oh, pa pants. Oh well. I really like the way the block shapes of this though, to be honest. The blocky curlers. Maybe it doesn't need an outline as well, you know? Well, maybe when I finish this, I'm like, nah, looks good, looks good like this. Now, I don't know what colour to do her top, because it's a dark brown, uh, dark brown, dark blue. Maybe I'll do the blue and the purple together, and we'll have a little bit of a layering effect. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, guys, thinking of problems and solving them instantly. It's a shame if you don't have a tiger near you, because these are really nice, but... If you do, then definitely check them out, I think. Like, they're so good for just cheap. They, they leave a little bit of mark, but I think once it's dried up, it won't look that bad. I think I've just given her, like, chunkier legs than she has, which is very rude, and I apologise, lady. What can you do? Sometimes you're just bad at drawing feet and legs. Okay, well, there's always a way to save it. <laughs> I'm gonna start shading it in with the dark mid-brown. I think will look nice. I'm just gonna do a bit of shading there to make her feet, her legs not look so rotund as I've made them. Let's do a little pesto update, shall we? There's pesto. Everyone's happy now. A little pesto update. If you've seen my channel or been around my channel a while, you know that I would maybe put pencil in here as well. But I think for this, obviously I'm testing out these pens. So I want to try and just use the markers. So I'm just going to use the markers. Obviously I had to use the black for the, the shoes, the micron pen. But yeah, this should be fine. And I'm quite liking how it's looking anyway. It's nearly finished, so that's that. I'm going to shade the face slightly. Okay, so I think we're finished here. I really like the way that it turned out. And I do like the the lineless style that I've gone with here. Obviously you can see a little bit of the pencil work underneath, but overall I think it works. And so that is a little review and example of what you can do with these cheap alcohol markers. So if you ever thought, oh, Copics are so expensive and I, but I wanted to try them, then definitely go with these. They are a good alternative. And I would say, yeah, they're, they're pretty good. They bleed a little bit more than Copic markers, maybe. But if you're careful with what you're doing, then that is not really an issue. And that's it, guys. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time. Bye. Look at this magnificent buddy. Desk buddy. Do you like Mr. Llama? Now she looks like she's hugging him. Cute.
she's like, ugh, get this thing off me. Rude. Just rude. I'd like to give a shout out to all my patrons. They are Erica, James and Cecile, Stephen Lee, Tim, Tom, Megan and Babbitt. Thank you guys, you're the real MVPs. If anybody out there would like a shout out at the end of my videos, then check out my Patreon down below.